All right, good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to give us one more minute for everybody to grab their food for those that made it and come on over. Make sure you, we have more recording. I'm going to put that on a loop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just sound to get these you know, comments. We can just play. No, we don't. We get in trouble. Is <laughs> <laughs> anyone on here with us? Hand knowledge mm -hmm. with a top producer. You don't come beating the door in to ask questions. Everything I learned in real estate, I learned from listening to people like Tim Pearson, Will Gaskin, Steve Gaskin, right? So any chance to, to pick their brain would be huge for me. You know, those guys are big time. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for coming. Those who made it, thanks for those that are watching at home. Uh, I'm here with Lisa. My, one of my favorite people, uh, she took on the uh, DEI committee when nobody would for me, and she's a great agent. She, I heard her in here coaching her new team members, and um, she is an amazing, would be an amazing coach. And so I wanted to interview her for like the last two months. We had to put it off because <laughs> yeah. of life, um, and to just get a sense of you know who Lisa is inside uh, this world and, and outside. Uh, so, I have a list of seven questions that I ask everyone that comes up here, and then you guys can have the floor. So, <clears throat> before we get started, <laughs> I would like to thank our sponsor, <laughs> Melissa Lane from CMG. They're our new in-house mortgage company, uh, <laughs> along with um, her and Rob Gaskins together, are, are sort of a team. Uh, there will be someone in the office more now. Um, at the end, I'll give her a chance to come up here and, and say something to you guys. I, didn't, I just put her on the spot, so I want to give her time to think about what she'll say to you guys. Um, and we'll get her contact information all out to everyone as well. All right, so you guys ready? All right, Lisa. Hey, Sprick, sorry to interrupt. But what's the Zoom? I got to call a few more texts. KWKT training. <clears throat> And the password is still one, two, three, four? Yes. There's a couple people that can't get in for some reason. Is it, is it on one like, I got all them in? They're getting like errors and stuff. You can have them text me, Jeff. And I'll do the text troubleshooting. All right, perfect. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. It seems like technical difficulties all over the place. So, Lisa. Top seven questions. How long have you been a realtor? 17 years. Well, she started when she was 10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So seven years. And you started, you started now. I just found this out. You started as an assistant. Yeah. Holy moly. I just found that out on Facebook. Yeah. Today. Yep. So tell us about that. Who were you an assistant for? Yeah. So uh my uncle and my grandmother. We're both realtors. My uncle is still a realtor. My grandmother has since passed away, but um, they were both realtors. And when I was going into college, my uncle said to me, "Hey, why don't, why don't you get your real estate license and work as an assistant instead of like some, you know, working at a frozen yogurt place, or whatever, you know?" So it's like, okay, yeah, I've always loved real estate, which maybe we'll talk about in a little bit. But like, I've always had a passion for real estate, so I was like, okay, cool, that sounds good. Um, so I got my license when I was 19 and started working for an assistant in my uncle's office, which was uh, Prudential in La Jolla, California, which is now Berkshire Hathaway. Right. Um, and <laughs> I did it and I, I was this woman's assistant and I just like vividly remember being like, this is terrible. I don't want to be a realtor. <laughs> this is a horrible job. <laughs> it was just like, it just. It made me cringe. I just didn't like it at all. She was just, 
I just remember like putting together stuff to mail out and different things. And I was like, I don't like it. Um, And then I worked for another agent who was actually selling houses. (laughs) That was a little better experience. Um, Yeah. And then, I mean, it kind of went from there. So I did that like all through college. So that made you decide to further your career? What what really solidified you making this your career? Yeah. So I, when I was younger, so my parents have rented a house my whole life. Uh, They still do because they live in San Diego and buying a house was just like always out of reach for them. And so growing up, we, my dad and I would go, because my dad's like does handyman stuff. And like he has a construction thing that he does. We would go or his job, his company. Um, so side note, my dad always had his own company. So like working for someone else is like something I never even considered. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we would go to our friend Dave's houses. He had all these rental properties and we would go to all of these. And I kind of grew up going to those. And then our vacations were at Dave's vacation homes. And I was like, oh, okay, this is, he's got something going on here. Right. And so from a little age, from a young age, I was like super into houses, both because of Dave and I think because my parents rented an apartment. So like, you know, I would doodle floor plans uh, like most children do. (laughs) 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 And and like design my little dream houses and stuff. Um, So so when I went to school, I actually, I went to school and I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was like an assistant and I thought, I thought, oh, I'll I'll be a a teacher and I'll do real estate on the side because that's like more stable and like, I'll be good at that. And then I did all my coursework to transfer to a school to be a teacher. And I sat in on the orientation. And meanwhile, I'd always wanted to do business, but I'm so bad at math. that I was like, I can't do business. (laughs) Um, So I sat in on the orientation for the teaching program, and it was an integrated credential and degree program. And I remember sitting in the back of the room, and they were telling us how we should get loans to help us through the program because we're not going to have time to work. And I had my real estate license. I was like working as an assistant and just sitting there thinking, I'm going to get a bunch of student loans and be a teacher. And I cried, as I often do when I'm emotional. (laughs) I cried and I left and I walked over to the College of Business and registered. And I got a business degree and I did have to take both accounting classes three times and calculus three times. You know, I passed on that third time, which if you didn't pass the third time, you couldn't continue with the degree program. (laughs) So uh, I did that. But other classes I was fine at, you know, so you get degrees. <laughs> That's right. So you go through all of this yeah. and then you get your real estate license. Well, you already had it. Had it. And then you decide I'm going to pursue this. Yeah. So actually when I was graduating, I applied for a job with a company that was wholesaling properties, okay. an investment company. So we would get places on the contract and sell them to other investors. And so I did that. And then Dave, the guy I told you about, who was like my inspiration for all of this, was flipping houses, this was in 2012, 2013, and had a company doing it. He had him and one other guy, and they were like a runaway train, and so they needed help. So I went and worked for them as an assistant and listing agent. So do you have a <laughs> uh, an idea since, the, I mean, those kind of were a blessing and a yes. curse. Uh, how long did it take you to sell your first real home? That's like yours, not one of the flips. Also not very long, because... Good. After I worked for Dave, I actually worked for Redfin in San Diego. Okay. Um, which Redfin has a pretty bad rep here. Everyone loved us there, including other agents. Like people wanted to take our offers. So just, oh, wow. so you know, <laughs> this is totally yeah. different. Um, but yeah, so I worked there and that was pretty easy. It was like, if you want to sell houses, like you sell houses. They were just like, come at you. Um, and then what happened was, I, my boyfriend was moving here. So that was back in San Diego. And I was, I started something at Redfin called Redfin Now. Um, I started that in San Diego where we're buying houses and reselling them, um, fixing them and reselling them. So I was doing it and I was traveling back 
here a bunch and kind of working remotely. And uh, Redfin found out about that and wasn't super happy about it. I was doing my job. Right. I was doing it. Uh, but so we, we parted ways. <laughs> and okay. then I moved across the country and joined a team. And that's actually how I ended up at Keller Williams. Okay. Yeah. What team was that? I joined the Hogan Group, which is out of Richmond, Virginia. They're a big team down there. Um, they are now their own brokerage. But I joined them, and I was their expansion agent up here in Northern Virginia. Wow. I did not know. I'm learning something new every day. Yeah. So uh, one of my favorite questions to ask is, if you could go back in time and tell your new real estate self something, what would it be? Oh, my God. So, I mean, when I was working for that investment, investor i was selling 60 houses a year but i was so focused on those houses that i was not building a business and the same thing at redfin i was just like i was so i gotta sell houses like more houses more houses more houses because like so much was coming at me right. so i didn't do anything to stay in touch with anybody wow <laughs> and i look back at that i'm like oh my god right. i could have had a huge business right Rashawn? um so yeah so i would like tell myself to stay in touch with those people right. like even you know i was selling houses and i was representing one seller but there were buyers buying all of them i could have started mailing to all those houses like right. i i don't know i could have i could have done a much better job and i was so i think i had such a bad taste in my mouth from being that assistant at the beginning right. and like a, like a sliminess with realtors like yeah, yeah that i never wanted to tell any of my friends to work with me either so i was like closing tons of transactions and then my friends would like randomly buy a place with someone <laughs> else and, and i just i honestly didn't care i was like I, whatever i'm doing all this yeah, yeah. but going back and looking at it i'm like wow i really could have done so better instead job. of 60 you could have sold 100 homes probably yeah in the wow. second year yeah. and and so continued that on Fast forward to now, uh, <clears throat> things are different. Where, if you had to categorize in order where most of your business comes from, what's number one? Um, well, I mean, this is not going to be the popular answer that you teach everyone. That's okay. <laughs> we do a lot of business from realtor.com. Okay. We are very good at converting leads. I have a background in doing that from Redfin. Right. So I can talk to people and make them like me and work with me. If you can convert those leads, that's a good place to, that's a good place to, to yeah. start. Yeah. And then what's second? Sphere and referrals. Do you know about percentage wise? Um, I think it's like 60, 40. Oh, not bad at all. Because what happens is the 60 from that becomes part of the 40 and then we'll balance it out. Exactly. Right. And that's right. what we're working on a lot right now, making those random strangers who end up doing a deal with us and love us into um, referrals, well, which is happening. Let's go off the script here and, and what, what, what are some of the things you do to take that person from random stranger closing and then bring them into your world forever? What are, what are some of the ways you guys go about that? Um, this has been a hard one to pinpoint for me, but when I get on the phone with someone, I ask them a lot of questions about them and what they're looking for and then I like sprinkle in little things about me like I you know I'll like sprinkle in that I've been doing it 17 years and that I love working with first-time buyers or that oh the buyer's agent on my team is from here she knows that area really well um all while like getting information from them so it's not like some hard pitch right. and then what I do is I tell people like what we like to do is sit down with our buyers and go through the whole process figure out exactly what you want, go through the contract so you know what you're signing um, and meet and see if we like each other. And I always say like, does that sound like something that would be beneficial to you? Because it's kind of harder to to say no to that. Like, yeah, that does sound kind of beneficial. Yeah. Or like, would that be helpful for you? Everybody watching should write that, that phrase down. Would that be beneficial to you? Huh. Right, think about it that way. Okay, so let's, that, that's amazing. Now fast forward. You met me on realtor.com, you close me, we shake hands, you take pictures with the little key. <laughs> what do you do after that to keep me as a client for life? We are working on that. Uh, so we've put together a plan with monthly touches, like a monthly mailer, a monthly email. We have events throughout the year. 
So we've done, um, so events throughout the year, then, you know, happy house, anniversary, birthdays, kids' birthdays. Um, we send out the Altas at the beginning of the year and just kind of try to stay in touch with them. We also have um, like a house report that goes out to them once a month with their house value. Uh, that's helpful. And then we do some, some online stuff to like follow them around online a little bit. Very cool. So like your pet, I saw the dog event. Can you tell them a little bit about your dog event? I think that was a nice success. Yeah. And it's a win-win, right? Yeah, we're having another one. Uh, so we really wanted to do, I've been wanting to do something like with a charity aspect of our job. And I love dogs. I'm obsessed with them. And for a while I was like, oh, I can't do something with dogs. Like there's so many people that need help. But I'm passionate about dogs and I decided that I would love to work with other people who love dogs too. Um, so actually that's why I decided to change my headshot. It's now a picture of me and my dog. For the longest time I was like, oh no, you know, what if people don't like dogs? And I was like, I don't want to work with them. <laughs> um, <laughs> not true. I'll work with people who don't like dogs. But we decided to partner up with this um, adoption foster agency called the Little Black Dog. Okay. Um, and they're a newer organization. They're a rescue group. They take dogs from other shelters that are overcrowded and they're all foster volunteer based. So they don't have like one shelter, it's all fosters. So we decided to partner with them and do an adoption event slash barbecue. And so we invited our people, they invited their people and all of their um, fosters came with the dogs and so we had a really cool barbecue with a bunch of dogs <laughs> and it was super fun and I will say I'm I'm generally like if you put me in a party uh, I just cannot wait to leave right? I'm just like uh, you know I will hang out with the dog because <laughs> I don't want to talk to people if I'm talking about real estate I can talk forever but um, this was really cool because I was so worried about having a social event and having to talk to people turns out everyone has dogs there's a lot to talk about the topic <laughs> so uh, in doing this event not only did you bring clients in and give them barbecue and let them see dogs dogs were actually adopted yeah at the event. Dogs. so it was yeah. like win-win like it's one of our things is win-win or no deal right so yep. you had a client party that was actually like win-win uh-huh how many uh, i know you're specific your admin got one, ended up with a dog, didn't he? <laughs> he now fosters the dog, okay, which is great. Yeah, okay. um, one of our past clients ended up adopting a dog. So right. that was pretty cool. And I think another one, I think someone else might have come specifically to adopt a dog. Where did you, well. you hold it? Or where did you do it? It was at a park in Alexandria. Yeah, so I reserved like a shelter with some tables and stuff. And we got a bunch of lawn games and bubbles and different things for kids. And... Um, catered some barbecue yeah now her clients that saw this <coughs> saw her giving back are a hundred percent likely to refer her if they hear the word real estate especially if they're a dog lover they're i mean they're going to be all over and, and she did it for her business and at the same time doing something for her business did something she's passionate about imagine if we could all do that in our in our parties or in our giving back right I, i'm this is not about me for me i give 10 percent of my income to martin syndrome which one of my sons has martin right i don't know how to have a party for that i would i think that's an, an amazing idea okay so number six tell us about your admin support and who's on your team yeah so my team um asher is our admin director of operations um Cat Wrangler, Jack of all trades. Yeah. What's a day in the life of Asher like for? Well, Asher starts his day doing our transaction coordinating. Um, then he does some marketing stuff for us, um, other random things that I ask him to do, and he ends his day with lead gen. Wow. Okay. And who's next on the on the roster there? Arwa. She is a new agent. She joined our team recently. Um, she's actually this. We're going to have her 60 day review this week. <laughs> Excellent. She runs her business like a business. I walked in here and saw her going over what her clients should do when they start making money. What the agents should do. I mean, sorry. Yeah. Blown away. What her agents 
should do. Her agents were in here and she was showing the screen about not just, I want you to leave, Jen, I want you to do this. She was telling them what to do when they start making money, right? That's a leader. That's the person leading their team. And so ups and downs of the business, people come and go, right? It's very hard to keep people. Um, what do you think one of the reasons is that you run a successful team? Um, so I think the biggest thing is I was on a team. And so being on a team, I saw things that I felt like could be done better or things where I was like, yeah, it's just not really, like, I don't feel like that's super fair to me and mm -hmm. the one doing stuff. So like, you know, a lot of teams will do this thing where like the team lead is the person who goes in the MLS for everything. We put both of us. So yes, I do get credit because I want people to look up the team and see that we've sold deals um, and that's how it's done. But I also want my agents to have their own business and be like, look, I sold houses too. Because sometimes you look at an agent on a team and like they have no houses that they sold. Yeah. What? But it's just because nothing's recorded in their name. So I try to do that. And like I try to come up with a commission split structure for compensation that I felt like was fair. Um, and then I think the other thing of it too is I'm not competing with my agents on my team. So like I'll work with referrals and stuff, but I really like, I like to have them do stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so Understood. I'll like give them clients to work with when I can, yeah. um, or they work with all the online leads and stuff, so. That's awesome. All right, last one for me and then I'll turn it over to you guys. Do you have a transaction horror story that's your favorite? Oh <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, favorites, is well, weird word to use so, for it, but it is I, a I horror story. Like the favorite one you like to tell, because realtors always have a, a story about something that went haywire, and they're like, oh, this time, uh, I walked the guy in, and he fell from the first level to the oh, basement. Through the, 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 the floor. The floor was flooded. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I don't know. I mean, I've showed mm -hmm. a lot of houses. I have showed a house once in, like, mm -hmm. Manassas, where... There were actual roaches crawling on the walls. Um, that was pretty mm. horrifying. Uh, but my favorite story is a buyer who was buying a place in Maryland, military buyer, got it under contract, got all the way through the whole transaction, um, got to our closing day, and showed up without any money. Um, and seemed genuinely surprised that he had to have it, even though we told him he had to have it multiple times. Um, and we were there and like, I was with Kelly, his universal title in Old Town, and both of us were just like, what the heck? <laughs> and so he's like on the phone, you know, trying to figure it out. He didn't tell us that he was going through a separation and his wife, had control over the money or, you know, at least some control over it. So he could not get any money for it. Uh, so then he, it was like, okay, we're not going to close today. Let's get an extension, yeah. figure this out. You know, and he called me and I just remember the voicemail that I laugh about now, him saying, you know, I'm just at a crossroads, <laughs> like a crossroads <laughs> buying a house. Uh, and then he disappeared. And, uh, then the seller sued all of us. Oh, yay. <laughs> I love those. Okay, guys, this is the time now, perfect timing. It's 1230, where I turn it over to questions from you guys. Uh, you can ask Lisa anything. Um, I, I say the more questions, the merrier. So, did anyone want to go first? Yeah. Uh oh, you said something interesting that I can definitely relate to. You'd rather hang out with a dog than other people. So, what are some things that you do to come off charismatic or, you know, just to be engaged with your potential clients? Yeah. So I think one-on-one, -on -one, I'm a lot better. If we're in a house, I'm even better. Or if we're talking about real estate, because I know real estate really well. Mm -hmm. So I can talk about it and feel really comfortable about it and ask people questions and like share knowledge with them. Uh, but also, and I've had to learn to do this and it's so silly, but like, just ask them questions about themselves. Like they have a kid, ask them, you know, how old the kid is, what's the kid's name, oh, do you have dogs? I always ask the pets. I always ask the pet's name too. Um, and he just I literally just ask them questions about them. Ask, be curious about the person you're working with or the person you're talking to. People love talking about themselves 
and the person who talks more feels like it was a better conversation. So, John, so when you're buying targeting ad, you are um, like thinking about who you're hiring, they have aspirations, career aspirations. So, what are some kind of like responsibilities that you give them to, or, or opportunities for them to, I guess, I guess, um, um, what's your like, I guess, in in similar terms, like go up the ladder. So John wants to know what oper what career advancement opportunities she offers her admin. Right. Like if her admin was thinking of getting licensed and, and moving up. Yeah, because you're talking about how like you know, some admins come and go. Or yeah. Not to hide, kind of like the same one. Well, I don't know yet about retention. Asher's Asher started in December, so he's made it this okay. far. Um, but with everyone on my team i've been really open and transparent and let people talk to me about their concerns and i generally try to address them uh so you know asher wanted an opportunity to make more money i want to show less houses so i'm said you know you can show houses for me and make a percentage um and if you he does lead gen for us and he has a bonus structure for that um so he has that opportunity and then um with my team in particular i don't plan on living in northern virginia forever so the idea is to set my team up with people who will run it um and potentially have like some some ownership or profit share he does have profit share um but so the idea would be he could potentially work up to i think that um being flexible and not uh, one thing we talk about here a lot is uh, not getting in the way of someone's growth. And if she had an agent on her team that was ready to fly the nest, right, and, and, and do their own thing and run their own business, hey, we support that, right? Go for it. Good luck, you know. You literally for everything. just did that. Yeah, thanks, yeah. yeah. We all do it, right? We've all been through it, right? The good thing is, is you don't you don't hold someone back. Two things happen, they leave and they do well, or they stay and they do well, right? And they could stay forever and be the, the critical piece to your business. Jeff, you had a question? Yeah, what's your um, goal this year? What's, he had, Jeff asked, what, what's our goal this year? Like financial? Yeah, like your, just your big, you know, gross commission income goal or sales goal. Um, we are so far away from from meeting it, but it was 650,000 GCI. So what's the number in sales attached to that? I think it's like 36? 36 no. million, what's the goal? 30, I think, I think that's what it's attached to. We are nowhere near that. Now, what did you do last year? 14? Oh, that was a big, that was a big growth goal. Yeah, I had bigger, I had ambitions for my team to be a little bit bigger than it currently is. We've, we've, uh, I really want to get some things in place. Like I want more people on the team because I I don't want to keep selling as many houses myself. I want other people to. And I really like the coaching side and the, the back end side of things more than the selling now. I mean, there are aspects of the selling that I really love, but I, I really, I love when I like teach a realtor on my team to do something and then I see them doing it and I see it working, that's fun. Um, Another feeling. Yeah, so I really <laughs> like that a lot. So I wanted my team to be bigger right now, and it's not. Um, and we're not doing as many deals as I wanted us to be doing, but we're just going to just keep going, keep going so along. In, in the spirit of like self-discovery and coaching, what do you think you have to do to, to hit that number by the end of the year? What, 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 what do you think is missing? I mean, to put you on the spot and you can... We need to talk to more people. Yeah. We need to... We, it's, it's pretty simple. Like we literally just need to talk to more people, including our sphere. Like I, we need to do more of that. When we have these events, we need to make a bigger a point of talking to everyone. Like we, we just had a, um, if you guys are familiar with like the reverse fold 100 where mm -hmm. you have like a giveaway. So we just did that. So let me tell them about it before you go. So a bold 100 is where you talk to a hundred people in a day. Okay, that's a bold 100, but that's you reaching out. 
now they've come up with a thing where it's a reverse goal 100 where you get people to reach out to you so a lot of agents are putting a prize up on their social media and sending it to their sphere and saying call me between these hours and you'll get entered into a prize to win this and then the people call them and then they talk to them about real estate and ask them for referrals right yes is that, that is that good enough yeah that is what it is um so we just did one and uh we had one person call us super embarrassing <laughs> Um, wow. well, learning experience, we, I looked back at it and I talked to my coach about it and it was like, okay, we didn't do enough to get people to call in. Like we emailed them and we posted it on social media. We didn't call people. We didn't text them, which like, that's where I'm saying, like, we're having these events and we need to do more touches around them. So it's not just the event, it's the touches around them that are so important. And so we're going to do another one. <laughs> We have a better plan now. You know, I talked to my coach about like what you're going to do leading up to it. And one of the things we talked about, which I thought was cool, I'm sure about you, is you, because I was like, okay, I, this doesn't make sense to me. I'm going to call people and tell them to call me. Like, what? Uh, so now it makes a little more sense. I'm going to call them and tell them to call me. But when I'm talking to them and when we're talking to them, we're basically going to tell them if you want 10 extra entries, call me between now and the drawing or on the day of the drawing and give me a referral. So we have more work, more like those I, I work. I helped an agent with one recently and they got 470 calls. Yeah, that would have been nice. So we can meet <laughs> and I can help you. So what was the prize out of curiosity? It's a three night hotel vacation. Yeah, so that's pretty. What's your phone number? I call for that. <laughs> <laughs> I had it in my call. Ah, oh, <laughs> yeah, that was like a real flop. A real flop like that. That's okay. That, uh, but, fail forward. Yeah. Right. And the next one, and you'll do a bowl of 500. Yeah. Okay. Next time, I'm going to tell you guys about it afterwards. Yeah. Well, like, post it on do, the Facebook page. You'll do it. Like, and it's three it, people call. It, 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 it's good that you have admin help to make that go to another level, too. Yeah. Right. Um, and if you have a good social media presence, the phones will light up. Yeah. Right. So you, you just need to make sure you do the. What does what your coach say? Call first. Yeah, so we've got a thing now. Call text email. Everyone on the team has like stuff they need to do. Calling, texting, on you know, mass emails are gonna go out. It's gonna be posted on social media. But I think the big element that well, I know the element that we missed last time was like really personal reaching out to people. We did a little bit, um, but it, it it it's funny how like in our business new things come up, but the Bottom line is still the same. It's the touch Tiny and the contact, people. yeah, right. And, and it's a numbers game, right? The more people you reach out to, the more people reach back. Okay, sorry. Any other questions for Lisa? Oh, let me go, Brock. Here. Um, I was just curious, what are different sources or methods of leads? Brock? Yeah. Do you want to repeat the question? It was, oh. what are different sources of lead gen? Uh, are different sources of lead gen? So. We do a lot of online leads. Um, so we're, we have a lot of realtor.com. That's like where most of our online lead business comes from. Um, and then I have a farm area and sphere. And a little bit from like, I mean, a lot of referrals, both from sphere and past clients, and actually a few few referrals from a lender that we work with. So don't, don't discount like for converting realtor.com leads. It's the hardest thing, probably in one, of, one of the hardest things in our business, converting those leads. I know firsthand, right? They're difficult to convert. And if you're not up on it, it's it's very difficult. So maybe we can get her later at a later time to teach us how to convert cold leads. Maybe have her host a 15 minute workshop for you guys on how to convert cold leads and then you guys can ask her questions. Yeah. They're and also being sense. called by another realtor. Oh yeah. So Unless you pay too. exclusive, right? Yeah, and I don't. So you're still she's nailing it out of the park, right? And so don't let her no, she's not a big realtor doc, don't let her like that's a big deal. It's hard. Everyone's like, yeah. oh realtor, those yeah. those online leads don't work. And I'm like, you're right, they don't. Don't do don't that. Sign up. <laughs> <laughs> but she's she's all little humming. It's, it's it's tough work. It's tough work. I can't get yeah, so on your um, regular events that you do, uh, I'm curious how you transition. I've, I've done several 
Uh, but it's more like come out to the event, I'm promoting it, so I'm getting all the touches. But it's connecting with people at the event. It, it's always like client appreciation, friend appreciation, but it's very little, let's talk about real estate. How, how do you connect at the event? Yeah. Talk about real estate with Jeff Harris. Geez, I don't know. People just asked me. Uh, we did have, we made like a few little flyers that I put in little plastic things like about our team, about our sponsor and like had our business cards and like a little one pager about us thing that people could grab. We also did um, a raffle. So we made everyone fill out a, the, our sign in sheet was our raffle ticket thing. So it was like this big, each sheet, we literally, our agents went out and handed them to everyone and said, here, fill this out completely so you can be entered into our raffle. <laughs> and, um, and so that's, that's how we did the sign in. And then, I don't know, it just kind of naturally happened. People asked about real estate. Yeah. Anyone else? We have um, 10 people joining us on Facebook and Michelle is wondering, um, Everyone has a different business plan and strategy. What sets you and your team apart from other teams, and how much of your business is referral based? Okay, so she's asking what sets her apart from other teams, and how much of her business is referral based. We answered that. Yeah, forty percent. Forty percent is referral. Yeah, it's like and I think she said what what kind of sets her apart more mm -hmm. is uh, she wants her team to grow and succeed, to hold them back and. She was on a team and knows how knows what not to do. Right. Yeah, I kind of I I lived it, so I saw what what I felt like could be done better for the agents on the team. So. Um, Are there any more questions on there? Yeah, let's take one more question. Uh, I have a question. I'm not sure, and I apologize if you're covered this because I was in a little technical difficulties. That's okay. Um, but I'm sure you talked about your why, um, and I heard a little bit about how you got started and um, you know getting involved in real estate. But um, what has kept you continuing, you know, in real estate all these? I mean, because you've been in real estate for your uh, your professional life, right? So what keeps you in it? She asked about her why and, and what makes her stick around. I like it. Hmm. I enjoy it. I have fun. I, I mean, my day, like, you know, I work hard, but I also spend time playing with my dog during the day. and and you know tending to my vegetables in my garden like that's my morning routine i get my coffee and i go outside and i hit the ball for the dog and like i don't have to rush to an office somewhere i thank god i don't have to be in traffic in this horrible traffic area um so <laughs> sure. Very true. driving around here is something else <laughs> um He's but from california though right yeah yeah not as bad there no no, it's not. It's not as bad. <laughs> it is not as bad. Um, so, you know, I genuinely like what I'm doing. I, I like it. And I really, you know, I've had, a, I've known a lot of people who like want to get in real estate, but they're scared because they don't, you know, it's a big risk just being on commission. And so that's why I'm so passionate about my team and like building it as I am and working so hard to make it so that a new agent can just join the team and succeed. Because I mean, I remember, so between working for Dave, for the investor selling his houses and going to Redfin, I had like a little period of time where I just joined this small office. And I just like went into the office and stared at my computer. What do I do? What do I do? Meanwhile, I'd sold like 150 houses already, but I was just like, what do I do? Right. <laughs> uh, so it's not, so that's why, like, that's my big reason. Like my cousin is, you know, has like, I'm like, oh, I kind of want to. And, you know, she doesn't want to because she's scared. Yeah. And my sister too, and like different family members, like how cool would it be if I, when this is all mm -hmm. built up and good and like it's getting there already, where I could be like, yeah, Join our team. You will sell as many houses as you want because this is what we do. And, and that's kind of what I'm doing already with my team. Yes, John. What do you offer your agents to help them succeed? Like lead generation coaching? You know, yeah, John asks, what does she offer to her agents to help them succeed? Yeah, so 
um, coaching, teaching them. So we do our new agent training every Thursday. We get together and like, I literally just go through stuff, you know, last week I showed them how I write offers quickly, and like the stuff I use and the templates I have. So that writing an offer takes like six minutes. Um, so I do that and then a decent amount of shadowing and like just kind of like, for instance, you know, I have two clients who I told Arwa, hey, you want to be the showing agent for these? You can show them and we're on like a group chat. And so I pretty much do all, a lot of the talking about stuff and she just like absorbs all of it. And so, you know, when we did a buyer consult the other day, where it was like, hey, I have a buyer consult. You want to come and do it? And they could be your clients, but I did the consult because she's not done one before. So oh, a good amount of shadowing. Um, and I'm super available. So like text messaging or emailing, I really help. I want to help. So like if they have any questions or, you know, I'm looking over contracts before they're going out at the beginning and different things like that. Checking everything. Jeff, I'll go first. Oh, Janet. Um, does your team work from a centralized office or does everybody work from their own location? Do they work here in a centralized office or their own location? Well, they can do whatever they want. We have an office, um, but a lot of we work from home. Um, and I have two, I just hired an ISA and he's remote. Um, but I mean, Asher seems to like working from home a lot, and I think Arwa does too. A pretty did. I do. Mike uh, prefers coming into the office. So she just cool boss. Hybrid. Yeah, cool boss. Yeah. Yeah, so you, I wanted to see if you could elaborate a little bit, um, for, especially for people that aren't familiar with the different team models. Mm -hmm. I think you mentioned something about like the Rainmaker, but then there's no deals in your game. There so, are, yeah. Um, if you're on the team, so you, from what I, I heard a part of it, but you, you actually let the agents also build some sort of credit under their name as well. Yeah. And so when you talk about the splits and that, that, that's huge compared to a lot of teams who the Rainmaker wants to take everything for themselves. Right. Well, so that was something. So when I joined the Hogan group, that was something in my agreement that was like, everything's going to go under Mike Hogan's name. And I was like, no. And so actually, I, I negotiated and I was like, I want stuff in my name. Uh, and they were fine with that. But what, because I was just like, if I'm going to sell houses and I'm going to tell people I'm selling houses, I need to be able to show them that I sell houses. Uh, so I do the same thing with my team and we, we both go on there. So my name does go on it. And the agent's name goes on it. So if you look up pretty in bright MLS, you will see that she has closed deals. You can look me up and see that the same deal as hers because I get credit for them, but but she can show people I've sold houses. So because you have to, I have to have my name on it because if it's not, then it's split between a bunch of agents and it actually doesn't look like the team has sold houses. Gotcha, gotcha. So so you get credit for the team and the individual gets credit. So it's all back to what Drew said earlier. It's a win-win. Yeah. I don't know if this is already or not, but um, we have a lot of fewer agents in the office. So um, what have you shared like one or two like big takeaways over the years? Um, a piece of pieces of advice that you would give? Yeah. Uh, stay in touch with everyone. <laughs> That's my big one. Stay in touch with everyone who you sell a house to. Uh, they liked you when you sold them the house, unless they didn't, in which case you get rid of them. You don't have to stay in touch with them. They don't stay in touch with crappy people, but which I recently did. I deleted two people from my career. I was like, I never want to talk to you again. Um, <laughs> uh, but stay in touch with the people that you sell the houses to. Um, and that I think will help you build a bigger business. That would be the big thing. Um, and talk to people. And talk to people, do things that you like doing for lead gen. That's been the biggest thing. Like I don't love sitting down and just nailing on the phones all the time. Some people are totally into that and they have great success. I had a barbecue with 
50 of my friends and they came over and all talked about real estate. And like, it wasn't a team barbecue, but they know I'm a realtor and we all talked about it. Like, so I think that's the big thing. Like, Hey, you love dancing, go do a dance class every night, invite your friends to do that or hiking or whatnot. Just be, be someone that like brings people together, doing things that you like. You'll meet people that like the same things and they need filters. 100% agree. One year I sold seven homes to the guys I played basketball with. Yeah. We were in a basketball league. Yeah. Do, oh. do the things you like. It's easy yeah. to talk about. Yeah. Also, just remember that if you're not going to be helping them buy or sell a house, some horrible agent <laughs> who's been in this business for 20 years and, you know, has sold five houses in those 20 years is going to be helping them. So make sure that you're helping them. Friends don't let friends use a bad agent. For sure. Anyone else have some more questions for Lisa? You have her for nine more minutes. We have a, an agent who just signed with our office. Oh, cool. Today. She's a friend. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. She's, she's very thorough. She's reading everything. Yes. What advice would you give her besides talk to everyone? That's the problem I have. Like, once they tell me to read, then I start reading. That's okay. <laughs> so, yeah. You're going to be an excellent learner. Um, I would plug in. This office has a lot of trainings. Other Keller Williams offices have trainings, too, that you can go to. Um, so I, I do the trainings. I still do them. I still, like, I just, you know, I'm going to go to a negotiating contracts class coming up and like you can always be better but um so yeah i would plug in and do the things and get a script partner find someone either in this office or another office or like go on facebook and join the different groups there's a lot of different realtor groups and find a script partner they don't have to be in your market area but someone who like just three times a week meet with them in the morning for 30 minutes and go over script Perfect. Anyone else before we let her off the hook? Maybe um, customers recognize this for the talk. Because um, I was in a situation where I recognized this for the talk and I was not happy about it. Mm -hmm. Those are how do you deal with people who do not like being. Okay, coach. Yeah. So, I mean, I when saying. you're. The idea with scripts is you practice script and you learn it and you know it. And then it comes, it becomes like part of your speech pattern. So like when I'm talking to uh, a new realtor.com lead and I'm saying, you know, would that be something that's beneficial to you? Like I actually am genuinely asking them a question, but it started as a script. So it starts as a script. And then once you know the script, it, becomes part of the way you like you internalize it and then you can actually have conversations that are normal human conversations not like a robot and you use parts of the script in it and, and the best thing to do is um to practice the script long enough you know it's, it's what to say right not necessarily how you say it you can change it and make it your own you do that a lot right yeah. you just make it sound like you Anyone else? I'd yeah. like I'd like to add to that for a minute, but sorry. Um, so on the scripts, you know, exactly what they were talking about. But you learn it initially, so that you understand what the purpose of each part of the script is. So you have to know what you're trying to accomplish. Once you know what you're trying to accomplish, that's where you can make it your own. And so we do like on our Wednesday calls, we have Rob Gaskins come every two weeks. He's our lender. And we talk about mortgage rates and what's happening with mortgage rates. And I think Drew walked by today and I'm on the phone and he saw me yesterday. I'm on the phone with someone and I'm talking about mortgage rates. Like I'm an expert now because we do it every, almost every week. And then I'm having conversations. So it's, there's no script anymore. It's just at the script practice, we talk about what the scripts are and then we continue practicing them. And then suddenly when you're talking to someone, it's not a script anymore. It's just, it's just you having a conversation. It's like your play comes natural. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. All right, everyone. Well, um, if there's nothing else, I'm going to have uh, 
Come on up. Sure. Let me stop. So I'm going to stop recording, but it will still be live. Thank you. Thank you.